Today I want to walk you through how I set up my sound device's Mixpeed 3 Mark II for recording audio for my YouTube videos. Most of the settings that I have configured here will apply to other Mixpeed devices, and I'm currently running firmware version 7.16 on my Mixpeed 3. To make sure that you can follow along, I'm going to first reset my Mixpeed to its factory settings by going into the menu, clicking presets, and clicking the load preset button. I'll press into the headphone knob on the right side to select the factory defaults. This will prompt the mix pre to restart. So the first thing I want to do is to set the mix pre to advanced mode by clicking into the last page of the menu and entering the system settings and changing the mode from basic to advanced. And then I'll go back into the menu and navigate to the second page which has the record settings. I'll click over the second page here and set the bit depth to 32-bit float from 24-bit. This will prompt the mix pre to restart. This feature is specific to the Mix Free Mark II series, and while I don't necessarily need the wide dynamic range that the 32-bit float audio provides, I enable it because it doesn't really affect my workflow in any way, and it's handy to know that if I ever need to recover my audio levels, I'll have that option available. Now continuing forward, I'm going to go into the input settings in the menu and switch the aux in mode from line to time code. This will allow me to jam sync the internal clock of my Mix Free with an external time code generator like this Tentacle Sync E, now going back to the main menu and going into the output settings and navigating to the second page, I'm going to switch the stereo out mode from audio to LTC out. This will enable me to jam sync an external timecode clock with the timecode configured on this mix pre and thus making this mix pre device as the master timecode clock. Moving on to the timecode settings in the menu, I'll change the timecode mode from aux in one to be free run. This means that the internal timecode generator in the mix pre three will continuously be running in the background. As for the frame rate, I set it to 29.97 ND. The ND stands for non-drop frame. This frame rate is the 30 FPS flavor that my Lumix G9 records in. And when I click on this jam button right here, I'll be brought into this menu where I can jam sync the internal clock on the Mix Pre with an external time code generator like this Tentacle Sync E by simply plugging in the Sync E into the aux slash mic in jack on the right side. And when I click on the Jam TC button, the diff here will be all zeros, indicating that both the Sync E and the Mix Pre have the same time code and that my Mix Pre has been successfully synced or jam synced with an external time code. Going back into the main menu again, I'm going to click on the record settings and change the Rec LR button and change it from L and R linked to off. This setting indicates whether or not I want to record the left and right mix from all channels into the polyway file as two separate tracks. Since I'm primarily recording dialogue through one microphone, I only ever need one channel. If this setting is not turned off like on default, the resulting audio file will have three separate tracks when I pull it into my video editing timeline. Additionally, this also helps save storage space on my SD card as I don't need to save those left and right mixes into the audio file itself. For the sample rate, I keep it to 48kHz because as mentioned, I'm only ever recording spoken word which doesn't really benefit from a higher sample rate. On the second page here, as I did earlier, I changed it to 32-bit foot audio, and for the pre-roll time, I set it to the maximum limit, which is 10 seconds. This means that my mix pre will record the audio from 10 seconds before I even click the record button. This is handy to have because there has been times where I started talking and forget to click the record button. This helps to capture that lost audio to a certain degree. Moving on to the last page of the main menu and clicking into the system settings, I have the Bluetooth turned off to conserve the battery life. And on the brightness setting, I'm setting the LCD and LED brightness to 3 because I'm using this Mix Pre 3 in an indoor studio environment with controlled lighting and reducing the brightness helps conserve battery power. Plus the blinking LED lights on the knobs can be a little bit distracting to me when I'm recording so turning it down does reduce that distraction there. The last menu setting I want to go through is the power menu. I'll leave it as NIMH Nickel Metal Hydride, which is the type of battery that I'm using. This setting here allows the Mix Pre to properly display the battery level indicator right here on the top. In terms of my powering setup, I am using the included battery slot with four IKEA LADA rechargeable batteries, and I can get upwards of two and a half hours of recording time with my one microphone setup and these settings applied. Now going back to the home screen here, I'm gonna talk about how I set up my audio channels. I have both audio channels 2 and 3 disarmed because I only use one microphone, and thus I only need one channel. And going into the channel 1 settings by clicking into the knob, I set the gain to 39 decibels which is the sweet spot that I found for my voice. I turn on the low cut filter and set it to 80 hertz. This will remove any low frequency sounds like background hums and since I'm primarily recording voice, 
80 Hz doesn't really remove any discernible frequency from my voice. On the next page, I keep the input mode to mic level, but I'll turn on the phantom power to 48 volts as my Rode NTG5 requires it. But yeah, that's how I configure my sound device's Mix Pre 3 Mark II. And as you can see with my 64GB SD card and the settings that I have configured, I'm able to record up to 88 hours of audio, which is a lot of audio. I hope this video helps someone out there. If you have any questions about the Mix Pre 3 Mark II or any other settings that I've configured in this video, go ahead and leave those down in the comment section below. I had to learn how to properly configure my Mix P3 the hard way when I got this recorder a little over a year ago, but I have learned quite a bit about recording high quality sound throughout this whole process. Thanks for watching, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and I'll be sure to get you more videos about tech and lifestyle, and I hope to see you very soon in the next one.